you're just playing a longer game. Mm -hmm. And we're in this opening that we don't like at all. Just simply capture her. Let's just get this out of the way. King's a bit airy, but we know this opening, it um, does give them a bit of advantage. They can have loads of pawns up if they play it correctly. But I'm hoping that their position isn't going to be as good. Ah, this is the one that's using the queen. Defending. So there will be a few pawns up, but I don't think their position is going to be any good. If we captured, then he gets our rook. That ain't going to be good. So I think we need to just go and get kingside castle myself. Yeah, that was the thing that I, I always said was the weakness. Not many players do do this, you know, the queen move coming up across. But yeah, they'll get the rook for free. We don't want that. If we brought the bishop up to um, attack the queen, then that's not going to work either. So, may as well just go and castle. So, I think the bishop will take, because the queen's going to get a check on our king, but... At least we'll get to castle because our bishop can um, attack the queen. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece than our queen's defending the rook. That makes sense to me. Yeah, so they're plus two now out of that. But we have developed more pieces than them. We have a knight, a bishop and a bishop out already. And we've got plenty of space now, which they've given to us by capturing our pawns. And then bishop and their knight are stuck on the back at the moment. Queen's moved again. So the smallest of tempo it looks like in this particular game might be key. This pawn in the centre's not got any protection on, but we need to get castled. King safety. So you'd think they'd be rushing to get their knight and the bishop out, or maybe even castling. Do we win a tempo if they don't go <clears throat> do go and castle? Sorry, for outgoing. Any more attacks on their queen? We'd have to get a support from our queen if we were going to attack it. Bishop can attack their queen actually. Just to harass it, just to make it lose tempo, not developing the other pieces. So I think our bishop can jump up g4. So that's I'm going to put that in my back pocket. I don't think there's any smaller piece attacking a high piece. Maybe the pawn can attack the knight. He's trying to make space for his dark square bishop. Small piece attacking a high piece. Okay, let's just get rid of this knight. And then let's hit the queen. So we're giving them things to think about. Thing is, you don't actually have to move the knight. I think they're probably going to try and do some cleverness. We're going to try and open up the space around our king. But we can still attack their queen with our bishop anyway. Give them something to think about, unsettle it a little bit. But I think they're going to focus on attacking our king area, aren't they? Queen's going to move to g3. Still looking for some potential bishop taking off the h-pawn type situation. Uh, so while they're focusing on that, we can be attacking their king king 
maybe stopping it from castling with the queen or the bishop supporting the pawn queen coming over to the a side or maybe coming to the b for supporting the bishop attacking the queen but the bishop will be on the other side anyway okay i'm going to, i'm going to stop calculating now they're taking a while so it look, doesn't look like they're going to move the knight it looks like they're going to try and open up space so i don't think we'll be taking that knight yeah like we just said yeah so our bishop can just attack their queen give them something to think about we know it's probably going to go to g3 and we can mobilize our queen do we go for an exchange maybe queen going to d d5 that's not the exchange because his queen won't be there do we continue with going to the a5 with the queen stopping their king but the bishop then blocks is there another attack on his queen if he goes to the g3 the knight can attack the queen so if he goes to the g3 mind you we need to have support for the bishop so we need to move the queen to c1 or c8 or something or to d7 i think c8 c8 is better because it gives space for the bishop to come back if it needs to right so yeah the knight going to h5 attacking the queen after the bishop supported so i think we're moving the queen to c8 I think that's more practical. D7 doesn't work. Well, it does, but if my bishop's getting harassed, I want it to have a bit more space. Yeah, because if it comes back and the knight takes, then doubles the pawns. I don't think in this particular game it's a double in the pawn situation. Players are a little bit high level, so they're not going to small for the smaller type cheap tactics. Although they are going for a cheap tactic here themselves. Uh, they're not rushing it. So we're looking for the knight going to h5, putting pressure onto the queen. So we're doing a lot of harassing of the queen, which is good. We're trying to improve our position. Because they're actually attacking our pawn on the E. But the, I think the more they actually go greedy munching, the better it is because we're improving our position. Because our, our bishop can actually attack the queen. Queen stuck in the middle. Then the rook can challenge the queen, maybe looking for an um, x-ray through to the king. So smallest of details. Potential sacrifices yeah okay I'm happy with that ish i'm even more happy because their knight and their bishop are stuck on the back and they're not getting activated because we are putting pressure on a higher piece it's basically it's managing the senior the senior ranked pieces on the board to win that kind of tempo which as we know is the initiative fighting for that initiative for a better improved position but also being willing to give up pieces for that better position as well such as like we're down two pawns now potentially going to be down three pawns if the queen does take but we've just worked out that the king is still airy it's not castled so if it does take we have potential for the rook actually putting a check through onto the queen and maybe winning the queen that's as far as I'm looking. I'm not looking any further. So the knight actually does move. But that doesn't stop our knight from jumping and putting a check on their queen. Because now the queen is supporting the bishop. And they quickly come for the pawn. So this is the this is the um the good situation we're down three pawns we can put a check on the queen like we said and we're looking for the golden shot or pinning the queen to the king obviously it's higher level players so they're not going to fall for that but it still wins us tempo their bishop and the knight are still on the back their rooks aren't linked up and they've only got two pieces out which is the knight and the queen so it's a bit of a win-win for us at the moment well positionally anyway
materially we're down three pawns but if you have a look at the space advantage that we've gained from this it looks fairly advantageous at the minute and this is all from that opening that I really can't stand I don't like it at all and this opponent has played it the way that I've said before where it can be really tough fighting against it you're, you're losing your position you're always trying to scrabble back the pawns and case in point they're, sh they're showing that here because we are down three points but we are massively up positionally on the board so they're thinking about it now our rook is looking to put the check on the queen through to the king and if they do see it and they move it i suppose we can bring the queen up and put a check on could bring the rook there and put a check on but i'm I'm wanting to stick with the basics, which is linking the rooks up. So if I move the queen off of the back, then at least then I have linked up my rooks. And that's putting pressure on the king, so the king's not getting castled, unless, of course, his bishop comes out on blocks. So if the bishop comes out on blocks... Do have taken the knight with the bishop type situation? Could go across and... Actually, no. No, because if the bishop takes the knight, then the pawn takes, then there's nothing supporting the knight, then the queen can come across and take the knight. Okay, that's too much calculation. Just sit and wait and see what they're going to do. I think it got to about four. Maybe, yeah, I don't want to go past anything like that. So I'm really excited for this particular game. It's a, it's a higher, higher level player. And they've moved. Okay. So um, after all that, I just think I'm going to put a check on the queen, king with the queen. So that at least it can't go on castle. If the bishop does come and block, we can just double up the rooks. Or I'm looking at trying to trade off the queen. But the knight is there. So if we did take the knight, the queen can always come across and take the knight. I'm going to put the check on first and see how it like, see how the land lays. Mm. I'm still chuffed that the bishop and the knight aren't out in the game. That's really quite quite nifty and it's all based on that kind of opening that opening is quite scary like we said like we're seeing now you are down pawns but it's only two or three pieces that have been developed and they've made loads of space towards your king you've not used any tempo to actually get your king to safety so there's loads of benefits to actually knowing how to circumvent um White's responses to that opening that I really don't like. But I've practiced and practiced and practiced against it because it, sometimes I do forget and I end up in that position. So I'd rather know how to kind of defend against it rather than, oh, well, I don't like it, so I'm not really going to know how to defend against it. So it makes me enjoy the game a little bit more. I still don't like it, but it... it you enjoy the game a bit more. There's rationales to each of the stages. You know, so basically, throughout what we've just explained, we've explained why we've done each of the moves. And the key thing is winning that initiative. So the king does move to the side. It's not actually brought the bishop into the game to block. Maybe they should have done, because I was umming and ahhing as to what I was going to be doing. And... If we go look, if we take the knight off the board he takes, then his queen can actually take our knight. Can we trade off the queen some other? How can we attack the queen? Bishop could come down and attack the queen. Develop the rooks. Get a rook across. Get the knight out. Mm. Support the queen. Just bring the rook out. Go for the exchange with the queen, or do they just go running?
Hmm. We'll take can always move the knight out of the way. We know the queen's eyeing it up. Could advance it up and then come back around again. Could block with the bishop. Could actually go for a queen exchange. Just put the queen in front. Mm-hmm. Which is better? Couldn't develop the knight. Get the knight in. And oh, but they've lost the rook. They've lost the rook. We can take the pawn. The rook hasn't got any space to get out. Smallest of details. So they're probably going to be a little bit shocked now because they've been trying to claw the way out and the first opportunity that the bishop comes out to take a piece, which looks like it's a free piece, then they're still getting squished on a higher piece. So we're managing these senior, senior pieces, managing the lack of movement or lack of flexibility within the game because they've just not developed them earlier on. And that's all because of the way that the opening transposes itself. Yes, it's one of those that gets pieces off the board early, gets the pawns off the board early, but for position on the board, it, it really doesn't help. And this player actually utilised, the to me, I think, the strongest version of that type of opening, you know, getting the queen involved, um, they've got the knight already in there, the bishop's already in there, getting the queen involved as well. So that was really quite good. That's the strongest way that I I keep explaining when I do get to that opening. Oh, well, you know, it's really annoying when if they do do that. And But we've been waiting for that for a long time. Normally they don't do that and it's simplified and it's pretty straightforward. This one went for the complicated line and it's demonstrated the inherent weaknesses in it it does look good you get the free pawns up you've got massive space well you've given massive space to black but you haven't developed your pieces so you struggle to get your pieces developed out there in the game to defend so we're just going to take this rook off the board it's um it's a higher piece nothing can actually capture it at this moment in time i think they'll try and push the pawn down to trap it in and trying to get some some sort of compensation yeah they have done so we can put some pressure on that pawn if we want to just bring a rook across. I think the F rook is best because the queen is attacking this pawn, isn't it? So just bring the, yeah, I think we'll do that. Double up. What else can happen? This bishop's not in the game as per se. So I think, yeah, rook, rook c8. Maybe we can get the bishop taken and we're actually on the queen. So that should be okay. The king is still a little bit airy and this pawn in the D, that's got no protection on it at the moment in time. We'll bring the rook across and double up the attack. Whoa, they moved a bit quick there. Okay, well, we can move the queen and attack the pawn as well. So we've got two pieces again still attacking the pawn and this d pawn definitely doesn't have any protection on it so we longer term get a little tap on there if the queen gets to actually take that pawn or the rook gets up there or something okay let's bring the queen yep So we're still mounting pressure, but what's this knight got? Any forky type things? He could come down and attack the rook. He's got defense from the bishop. Rook can just go and take the pawn though, because we've got like two pieces to defend in there, so he can attack it. 
Well, we'll have three pieces attacking there. Any forky forkies? No, but I think that should be all right. What can I expect? Okay, the bishop could actually go and attack our rook pawn on the hit. What is it? H7? A7? Just come back and attack. Don't know what this rook's doing on the H. It looks a little bit out of sorts, doesn't it? Um, this D pawn's got to be key. Not sure what they're going to do now. Time is running down. I think it's a 10 second increment, so if they're a bullet person, they'll clock it back up dead quick. Whoa, attacking my queen. We could go and attack this unprotected pawn, couldn't we? Boom. And with them, we're on the D pawn as well, which has got no protection. And it's attacking the king. Looks like the rook is coming down. It's a little bit late to the party. Oh, you know what he's doing is attacking the G pawn. His bishop's attacking as well, but we can put a check on the king. Grab this pawn and take a, put a check on the king at least. Where does the king go? That's the, it's going to go and block the rook. So that attack's not going to be strong. And his king can't come and protect the H pawn. Oh, and he's looking for a discovery, but it's going to be too late, isn't it? The rook can put a check on the king. And we could just put another check on the king, and then it's checkmate, because the queen's coming across. Excellent. 